Ahlan. Welcome to my channel, Botswana Thinking Law, where I bring you and the law closer. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about the law in relation to employment. Before we get started in this video, I'd like to put in a disclaimer. This is not legal advice. This is simply a sharing of general information. If you have a problem of a legal nature, please engage the services of an attorney. Now back to our video. This is part one of a video series I will be doing in relation to employment. The starting point in discussing this uh, law relating to employment is who is an employee? Do you know if you're an employee or not? The thing to look at in trying to see if a person is an employee include but are not limited to the type of contract or agreement between the parties, the method of payment, the amount of control that the person who is called an employer has in relation to the employee, intention of the parties, and whether or not this person who is said to be an employee is allowed to do work for other people uh, for them to make money. And when I say is entitled to do work for other people, I mean in the context of what it is that they would be employed for. And I'm using the word employed here just for reference because this is the starting point to see whether or not this person is an employee. So if Basitsana and Malaboho enter into an agreement where Basitsana will be repairing bicycles for Malaboho and Malaboho's client. On this issue, the question is, is Basitsana also allowed to go and repair bicycles for other people for her own benefit, for her to make money? And if the answer is yes, she is allowed to do so, it might point to the fact that Basizana is not Malaboho's employee. But if the answer is no, she only does work through Malaboho, then this might point to it being an employer-employee relationship. However, this is not the complete list because every matter has to be looked at um, on its own facts. Now, if there is an employer-employee relationship here, the parties will enter into an agreement or a contract for employment. And this contract or agreement for employment can be in writing, which is what is usually preferred because it makes it easier for the parties to know what their rights and duties are. On top of that, it also makes it clear on whether or not the party can challenge the conditions in that agreement to say they are in line with the Employment Act or not. An employment agreement can also be oral. It does not have to be in writing in order for it to be said to be valid. One of the fundamental elements of an employer-employee relationship is the issue of wages. Wages are earnings paid by an employer to an employee and they are sometimes referred to as a salary. Wages have to be agreed and they can be paid on certain intervals. Wages in Botswana can be paid on this cycle and they cannot be paid for less than one week and they cannot be paid for more than one month. Then this is to say when a person enters into a contract for employment and they agree on a wage period, which is the cycle of wages, the wage period cannot be that they will be paid every day except if they are casual employees. But in this discussion, we're not going to be discussing casual employees. So if a wage period is agreed, 
it will be for either one week or longer but it cannot be longer than a month so people can be paid every week or they can be paid every two weeks or every three weeks or every month that is what is allowed by the law if the parties have not agreed on a wage period then the presumption is that the wage period will be one month that is to say that the person who is the employee gets paid by the employer on a month to month basis unless it can be shown differently wages have to be paid by the employer to the employee within 3 working days of the passing or expiry of the wage period so if you are paid on a month to month basis and let's say the payday is um on the 31st or 30th of every month by the 3rd of the following month if it is a work day so let's say the 30th is on a monday by the 3rd which would be within 3 working days that wage must have been paid by the employer to the employee unless the employer can demonstrate that there is something preventing them from making this payment and this should be something that is reasonable it cannot simply be that the employer does not have money <laughs> and it cannot be that uh, you know the system is down as we sometimes hear there has to be good reasons because there are various methods of payment of wages So if for example there is only one person who is authorized to make payments and that person uh falls ill uh on the day that payments have to be made and this illness lasts for an extended period of time the employer has to make a plan to ensure that the employees are paid and in making that plan the plan might go beyond the necessary 3 days but the period after that has to be within a reasonable time and this is because the employee has already rendered the service that they are being paid for wages have to be paid during a work day and they have to be paid during work hours Wages cannot be deducted from unless these are deductions that are authorized in terms of the Employment Act. And that is one thing to note. The most important law in relation to employment is the Employment Act in Botswana, and then the second most important one is the Trade Disputes Act. And the reason why the Trade Disputes Act is important is because it is the one that deals with the issue of how you can enforce situations where the employment relationship has fallen apart and there's a dispute that arises between the parties. I will deal with the dispute resolution mechanism in employment matters in this video series. When wages are paid they have to be paid in the form of money that is legal tender and this payment in the form of money can be hard cash it can be a direct deposit into the account of the employee or it can be by check however we know from the budget speech um that was recently given that checks are going to be discontinued by 2024 Therefore this employment act would have to be changed to remove the fact that employees can be paid by way of check. An employee's wages can also be paid in kind. And in kind means that payment can be in any other form except for money. However, if the payment is in kind, it cannot be for more than 40% of the wage this is to mean if a person earns 100 pula then 60 pula should be in the form of money it can be hard cash or deposit into the account or a check and then the other 40 pula can be the one in kind 
and this could be in the form of clothes it can be in the form of food and things of the sort however it cannot be in the form of alcohol or habit forming drugs wages cannot be paid in a store that sells alcohol unless of course the person who is being paid is an employee of that establishment that sells alcohol earlier i talked about uh, the fact that there cannot be unauthorized deductions from wages the employment act does make it clear that there can be deductions from wages and these are authorized deductions these deductions include deduction of tax pay as you earn they include deductions for uh, a pension deductions for union membership where the employer pays the union directly for and on behalf of the employee and some deductions also include loans or cash advances from the employer to the employee however if an employer gives a loan or cash advance to the employee then the deduction should not be such that it prevents the employee from being able to live on the salary and if there is a loan or a, a cash advance given to an employee by an employer then that cannot attract interest if it attracts interest then it is against the employment act however this is not to say that this list is exhaustive you can look through the employment act because it does give even more details of what deductions can and cannot be made in relation to an employee's wages. The next issue I want to discuss is that of vicarious liability. And this issue of vicarious liability in effect means if there is an employer employee relationship and while the employee is doing their job they make a situation where they cause an accident or an injury to another person then the employer can be held liable for this employee's actions or lack of action an example of this is if an employee is in as hired to be a delivery person and while they are on route to go and deliver they get into an accident and they injure someone this person can sue the employer and employee in order to recover money in respect of that accident and the injuries that they suffered these can include compensation for medical um, attendance uh, therapy and things of the sort if you want me to prepare a video where i talk about the various um things that a person can ask for in relation to issues of accidents or workmen's compensation and things like that please leave a comment down below in this example the person who is suing the employer is suing the employer because the law allows this for reason that the employer would have more money or is likely to have more money than an employee in addition to that the person has to demonstrate firstly one that there is an employer employee relationship and two that this employee caused this accident during the course and scope of their employment if one of these two elements is not proven then this issue of vicarious liability does not arise or the person will not be able to successfully sue the employer for compensation now we move on to probation and this is an important thing to discuss with a person if you intend to hire them as an employee or if you are an employee and you intend to work for someone the reason why it is important to discuss is because probation has to be at the beginning of the employer employee relationship it cannot be in the middle the law has prescribed the maximum period of time that a person can be on probation for for people that are considered to be unskilled employees 
probation can only be for a maximum of three months and for those that are considered to be skilled employees probation can only be for a maximum of one year that is 12 months and this period is calculated both as one long period or cumulatively an example of this is where a person is hired and they start off with probation if they are an unskilled employee then perhaps the agreement between the parties can be the probation will be one month and the function of probation is for both the employer and employee to see if they are a good fit for that organization and to also see whether the employee is able to do the work that the employer wants if towards the end of that month the employer thinks i might want to observe this person a bit longer then they can extend this probation period this probation period has to be extended before the first period lapses so if the probation period is one month and one month is considered to be 30 days on the 30th day the employer has to communicate to the employee whether or not they are extending the probation period or whether they are terminating the employee's employment if they fail to do so on the first of the next month in terms of the law this employee is considered to be employed and no longer on probation if the employer decides to extend the probation then the probation cannot be extended for more than three months so if the first period is one month and they extend it for another month they only have one more month to extend because like i said for unskilled employees probation is three months at the end of that three months then the employer should have decided by the last day of the extended probation period and communicated to the employee whether they are going to hire them or they are going to terminate their employment if they do not do this then the employee is considered to have been um, hired this is also true for skilled employees they can be on probation for a maximum of one year that could be in the agreement to say they'll serve probation for an entire year or that could be cumulative where they start off by serving probation for three months and towards the end of that three months the employer says mm, i want to see some more and then they extend it by a few other months and so on both the employer and employee can terminate this relationship by giving each other notice during the probation period the notice during probation cannot be less than 14 days however it is also tied to the wage period in that if the employee has a wage period of one month then the notice period will be one month as well but if an employee has a wage period of one week they then have to give two weeks notice if it's still within the probation period one question a person might ask is but who is a skilled and who is not a skilled employee and in deciding this the courts will look at various factors some of these factors include the qualification of the employee the type of work that the employee does and the number of years and the various trainings that they have gone into and the skill that is required to perform that particular work and the reason i refer to the courts in this instance is because the employment act is silent on who is skilled and who is an unskilled employee and this is also subjective on the type of work if a person is hired as an attorney for example then they qualify as a skilled employee 
because they are working within a particular discipline they have the necessary qualifications and so on but if a person is a qualified uh, lawyer and then they go and work as a secretary for example then they might not be categorized as a skilled employee for purposes of that post therefore everything should be judged on the facts of its own case when a person or the parties the employer or employee decide to terminate the uh, relationship during the probation period then there is no need to give a reason if you have given the necessary notice then the law considered that the termination is done for a good reason unless the person can demonstrate differently an example of this is if the employer decides you know what uh, i don't think this person is a good fit for my organization then the employer sim- simply gives the employee the necessary notice and does not have to give reasons for such termination that is also the case in respect of an employee however it must be noted that when we come to discussing the issue of termination the law allows for a person to make payment in lieu of notice that is instead of notice so if your notice period is 1 month you can simply pay 1 month basic salary to the employee or the employee can pay 1 month basic salary to the employer so that they don't have to serve that notice period the final issue i want to discuss in this part 1 is the law in relation to employment of disabled people In terms of the Employment Act the minister will make regulations dealing with the employment of disabled people where it is necessary I haven't come across any regulations that deal with the employment of disabled people which is a problem effectively but you know that's unfortunately what the law is right now if you are aware of any regulations that deal with the employment of disabled people please leave a comment down below tell me what these regulations are and i'm not talking about policies i'm talking about regulations to the employment act leave it in the comments down below you know let's have a discussion about it thank you for joining me on this video which is part 1 uh in the law in relation to uh, employment If you have any questions on this discussion or any questions in relation to law please leave them down below or you can put them up on my Facebook page at Bozona Thinking Law or on my Twitter at BW Thinking Law please like share subscribe ring the notification bell so that every time i put up a video you get notified and because this is a video series on employment you don't want to miss the next part and i will see you in part 2 thank you for joining me bye